All right, listeners, uh, welcome back to another episode of the Anchor Lake Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Griffin Gushman, joined by my co-host, Jaden Warren, and a very special guest, Kaylee McIntyre. I'll go ahead and introduce yourself, Kaylee. Hi, I'm Kaylee. I'm a sophomore for the NYU swim team. Well, we're super lucky to have you today. Um, thanks for taking the time to join us. Um, as always, listeners, uh, feel free to ask any questions in the comment section. Let us know what you want to hear from Kaylee. Uh, we'll try and get on here and answer as much as we can. So, I guess just tell us, um, you know, right now what your season outlook is. You know, um, we're less than a week out from NCAA. It's coming off a great uh, UAA. I'm sure you're hoping to carry over some good performances from conferences into NCAA. So just uh, give us a little look into your headspace where you're at with that so far. Yeah, uh, we have a pretty good group going to NCAAs this year. Uh, a lot of freshmen, especially for the women's side, which is just always exciting to get new faces there and different energy. Um, and we lost a few pretty big figures last year from our senior side, especially for the women. I think most of our relays, like at least half were graduating seniors. Um, so just seeing how people have filled in and stepped into those different roles has been really cool to see. Like um, Nicole Reniel, she's a 200 flyer. And last year she swam the two fly the five free and the two free. And now she's stepped up and she's doing the hundred back in the relay. And she has one of the fastest times in the country in that, which is cool. Um, just seeing how people fill in in those different things. Um, and then our team is like pretty unique because I mean, our training is a little bit, I think different from what I've heard other people's training is like, um, like I don't train sprint. So that's been one thing, like I swim sprint events. So I've been trying to convince my coach to let me do sprint practices instead of a 6,000 yard aerobic practice. And I've luckily had a lot of sprint practices um, between UIAs and now, which has been really fun just to kind of get through not doing crazy yardage when I swim a 50 free. Um, uh, and I think our team like overall, we're all just excited to see what happens. None of us really are looking for any specific outcomes. It's just we're going to show up and do our best and give some of those top swimmers and teams a run for their money. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a pretty good way to look at it. Uh, if you want to, like, elaborate a little bit on um, your style of training, I mean, I know, like, just from, you know, um, looking at, like, your swim cloud and stuff that you're on, like, a really good progression coming into NYU. Um, but, I mean, you really took off last year uh, under the NYU training. Do you think that, um, you know, you switched up anything from high school to, to college? Or maybe I want to talk a little bit more about um, what you alluded to a couple minutes ago. Yeah. Um, so in high school, I, like my eighth grade and freshman year, I definitely trained a lot. And then COVID hit. So I stopped training completely for a while. California was shut down for a pretty long time. And then when we got back into training, I didn't really know if I wanted to swim anymore. So I was just kind of like showing up when I wanted doing kind of whatever I wanted. And then my senior year, I played water polo in the fall. So I was doing no swimming. It was just high school water polo and my team, my high school team loved them, but we were horrible. <laughs> we didn't win a single game. Actually we won one game that was against a team that literally had never played before. <laughs> um, so I started doing a lot of sprint training there because we couldn't get anybody to swim over like a thousand yards for a practice because they were there for water polo, not for swim. Um, and then my sprint that year in my hundred got a lot faster. So I came in for the two back, which is why I swam it last year. Cause I came in, that was my best event. Um, and then my hundred free was also a better event when I was getting recruited and stuff. So I came in and I'm in the mid D group and I, we trained sprint stroke at least twice a week so I was training backstroke and then every other thing was kind of like 500 base ish for some reason and then I would do like one or two sprint practices a week um and it's definitely changed a little bit this year I do less backstroke all first semester I was still training backstroke which I hate the two back so much so I'm so glad to not do it this year swimming it last year was pretty rough um and it's just kind of changed we've gotten more sprinty towards the end of the year and I've been working with my coach to do a little bit more of that because no one on the team only one other girl swims my events and she is in the sprint group um but in midi I'm the only one who does all free and all like under 200 so we've been changing that up a little bit not that much my coach does love his yardage and loves his fast intervals and stuff 
Um, so I think that's why my 200 is pretty consistent because we'll do like a 3000 yard set and I'm holding like minutes or so for different things, which is good enough for like a distance person. So I think my 200 just gets easier with that. Mm. And then I'm never swimming a 500. I will never do that if I'm, well, I can swim a 50. So you guys are all distance swimmers, which is crazy. Um, respect to you, but that is not my style. So. Oh. Yeah, well, I mean, it sounds like definitely, you know, you're due for an improvement, obviously, given mm -hmm. you know, the situation with COVID and uh, and, and you doing um, uh, water polo senior year. But yeah, we were, we were actually just talking before uh, before the podcast. Um, we were going to ask, you know, why you switched out of the out of the two back this year, um, because, I mean, on paper, it obviously made a lot of sense, um, given that you would have been second in the individual hundred last year. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, yeah, definitely a pretty interesting progression there. And, and you know, just. Purely out of curiosity, I know you said you uh, have liked doing these sprint practices the past couple of weeks before uh, NCAA's, but, you know, are, are you more of a, uh, yeah, you know, this long distance stuff really benefits my sprints, you know, I can go all the way up to 200, but I've got still got some speed and I've got endurance or, you know, you more of a sprint revolutionist and uh, kind of rocking with the sprint practices a little bit more now that you've gotten exposed um... to that. That's a hard question because I think my 200 is it feels super easy because I can swim for 30 minutes straight at a pretty fast um, speed. But I will say like Isabel Oldham, she swims the same events as me and she's improved a lot in her 200 over the past year with doing only sprint. So mm -hmm. I kind of feel like it's whatever. Well, for like you have to go for body type, obviously. I'm not super sciencey, so I know nothing about this. I'm definitely built to be a distance swimmer, but I'm not. Um, but I think if you have like the proper sprint practices and stuff, you're going to be good at whatever you do. Same with like distance. If you can like get up to speed and let's say hold 55s for 10 minutes, you're going to be able to swim a fast 200. Um, so I think whatever mentally works for you, because I think if I stopped doing some aerobic practices, I would struggle mentally with my 200 because whenever I think it through, like in my race, once I hit like the 125, I'm like a 75 is easy. You can do a 75. But I think if I was only training like 50s and 25s, I wouldn't mentally be able to do that as much. So I think it's whatever works. The sprint revolution, I think that works very much for 50s. Because I think your 50s, like we're only going to get faster at those in the 50s and 100s. But I think a 200 is just a little long. Yeah, that uh, sounds pretty, uh, sounds pretty pretty relevant to what's been going on a lot in the swim world but uh yeah I think you're spot on I hear you talk a lot about um you know mentally what gets you through practice and then you know a couple minutes back you were talking about how your your team's expectations going into NCAAs are to perform as best as you can and, and give people run for your money but not necessarily um you know predicated on certain outcomes I think that rings true with a lot of what people talk about in you know elite high level mental preparation I'm, I'm super curious could you talk a little bit about how you get mentally prepared for your races um I kind of try not to think about it until I'm swimming it mm -hmm. um I do have a little routine I do before like I wear bungee straps which I get made fun of they call me like I'm eight years old still with those um but I like tie them in a bow and everything and I've been doing this for like seven years or something now and then I have to put my hands in the water and like get my face wet which is a thing from outdoor swim because your hands and feet go numb when it's cold outside mm -hmm. um so like mentally prepared, I don't know. I kind of just like don't think about it. Whenever I have some negative thoughts about maybe losing a race or something, because like it's coming, I, I've lost races and obviously I answer boys, I don't want to lose or anything, but I also don't necessarily want to think too much about winning. So like if I ever start doubting myself, I kind of just like pretend like I've won like get my because the little adrenaline that comes when you start panicking about these things um I know Caitlin Marshall in the locker room was the, the other day was like we should um have a little support group for people who jolt awake at night like panicking about their races um I try to not do that until we're swimming it because a race isn't won until it's done like you can't predict what's going to happen you don't know what the person next to you is going to do um so I kind of just like don't think about it and D3 is about having fun. Swimming is about having fun. Like college sports should be for fun, not for anything else. So that's kind of my mindset. I know some people on the team are a little different, 
like I know Derek Moss really gets in gets locked in and stuff but I kind of just try to have fun you know I'll watch the heat before cheer on any teammates in that and just try to feed off whatever energy is coming yeah I, I think to your point I mean I think um both in you know actual physical training and mental training I do think that like what works best for you really is um something that we've heard a lot on the podcast too and I think definitely something that you kind of you know hit the nail on the head on I mean yeah like I walked past Derek like five times when I was going to the bathroom in the stairwell you know jacket and gloves on like headphones Mm -hmm. on like not saying a word but I also think like you know like sometimes I do a little bit better when I'm you know relaxed like you said for a race like up and cheering I mean like one of my better dual meets this season was against Carnegie and I remember I was like just like screaming at during the first relay and stuff like that so I, I definitely think that uh there's something to be said about like being relaxed and, you know, being mm-hmm. in your own mental space before your race. And I think that's all pretty, pretty insightful stuff there. Um, and I guess, um, you know, uh, b- building on that, um, uh, you know, for your off season training, um, do you do anything, you know, have you worked on anything between last year and this year, whether it's on the physical or the mental side? Um, that you really wanted to improve on this year? I mean, we always like to ask uh, ask this question, you know, just because it's a little bit different in D3, you know, with the off season. I mean, it, I'm not sure if you've seen right now, like we're just down here sprinting 50s mm-hmm. every day because we can't figure out anything else to do with our time. Um, so, you know, if you want to just like touch on that, you know, anything that you did special during the the, the D3 dead period last year. Yeah, um, I think this kind of falls back to my high school training where I was never – really stressed about showing up to practice and stuff um I trained like most of I don't know kind of the end of July I'd swim with my mom randomly um and I would swim with my club team occasionally but nothing too serious I mean I took almost all of April and May off of swimming and I think that's like the great thing about D3 swim is you don't have to train year-round and you're not expected to keep swimming at meets over the summer um which is so nice because long course is horrible. Um, And I don't know, I think I just like kind of keep it relaxed. Don't really think too much about what I'm doing. Getting back into shape sucks like so much, but I think also having that time off and not burning out mentally or physically is really important. Um, Cause I, I do think if I was swimming every day, if I had people to train with at home, that's a different story. Like it would be fun. I'd be willing to do it, but it's kind of hit or miss with all the different college kids coming back. So I think just keeping it like show up when you want, have fun. Um, but I definitely did more sprint training over the summer when I did train just cause I was out of shape. There was no way you'd get me to swim over a 50. Um, so like my mom would race me occasionally. She still thinks she, she can beat me on some things, which I think she could give me a run for my money and like, a 500 or something she still goes pretty fast but definitely like worked on breakout explosiveness and that's it but I did not touch weights since before taper frenzies last year I do not like lifting weights it's my like least favorite thing um I don't mind it when I'm at school because our lift coaches are pretty great and being with the team is great but I absolutely hate it so um didn't really do anything different besides definitely took some mental break yeah, I mean, honestly, like, you know, depending on what way you look at it, I think that that could definitely be considered as something to improve for the next season. I mean, you've seen, you know, the, with greater frequency, like high level, like Olympic level athletes taking mental breaks and, and and things like that. So I definitely think, yeah, you have a you have a great point about like one of the things that makes D3 so unique and so great is the fact that, you know, you kind of do get to set your own schedule. And, mm-hmm. you know, if something that you feel is going to make you significantly better the next year is taking, you know, a break like that, you know, definitely something that you can and did do and, you know, certainly didn't hurt you. I mean, there's people that would say that you should swim over the summer, but, you know, clearly, I mean, you PR'd in two out of your three events at conferences and yeah. you're still you just have to summers. You just have to come back in good enough shape. Right. No, I, I, That's I my mentality. That. Yeah. And my I coach mean, probably that, disagrees, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, and I, and I mean, there's always, you know, I'm sure you guys do too, like about a month of captain's practices mm-hmm. uh, when you get back. So there's always, you know, plenty of opportunity to uh, to get back in shape. And I mean, some of the people that I know that did the best this year were guys that, you know, were mostly in the gym and in the water once a week, you know. So it def- definitely varies from person to person. Obviously, being distant swimmers, you know, him and I were swimming a 10K over the summer um, together. Yeah, that's 
Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, it's different from person to person, but I totally agree with you that, you know, like doing what you feel like you need to do is absolutely the most mm-hmm. important part of the G3 offseason. And, you know, for as good as of coaches as we have, it is pretty good to break out a routine every once in a while. So I'm really excited to hear from you. I know we talked a couple minutes before the podcast started about your uh, your love of D3, and that's something we always try to highlight. Give us your D3 story. How did how did you get to NYU? Um, and, you know, it seems like you've been liking it pretty, uh, quite a bit since then. But, uh, yeah, shoot. Okay. Um, so... I hate to keep bringing up COVID because like it's literally in the past four years ago, but that was a big thing for me. I think in high school, if I had kept swimming and I didn't lift at all in high school. So I think if I had done that more consistently, I would have been faster. Um, And I probably would have had different choices for colleges, but ultimately I didn't really. Um, And I was looking mostly at schools kind of closer to home, like West coast and stuff. And then I got an email from NYU one day. And I was like, oh, wait, this is a good school. Might as well give it a shot. And um, when I was like going through all of this, I was just kind of thinking, like, do I want to stay in my own bubble of California and being protected and going to a school where 10 other people at minimum in my graduating class are going? Because that's kind of what happens in California. The UCs are very dominated by California kids. So you're bound to know someone, which I think is a good thing. But I kind of wanted to challenge myself a little bit. And I feel like college is like four years where my parents are willing to support and help me and I get to go live in New York city is pretty uh, like, it's an amazing opportunity. So I decided to take it and I'll be honest, my freshman year was a little challenging. Um, I did not adjust that well to being far from home, but ultimately, you know, I found my friends and community here, which has been really great. Um, and we got a little bit more time at Christmas this year. So it helped a lot with different things. Um, and then when I got here, I did feel like the D3, like when we went to different meets and especially once we got to conference, it reminded me a lot of my high school swim experience, um, like my actual high school, not the club team. And my high school swim team was like, we were not swimmers for the most part. And they're still my best friends. And I had the privilege of my mom being my coach which was a good and bad thing because I would just like sit out in the sun and not get in most of the time but um like I've been used to teams that aren't incredible like they're not well performing my four hundred free relay my senior year I'm pretty sure I might have been the only one under a minute in the 100 free um it's like there was some pretty steep drop-offs but just like being in that community and cheering for people when they break 40 for the first time in the 50 free and that's the most exciting race of the day not somebody going I don't know 48 and 100 fly because we had one kid did that but then we had people who were barely finishing 100 fly like them finishing the 100 fly was more exciting than this kid going fast I mean he's great he's at UCSB now but like I the races of people who weren't swimming growing up and weren't born to like do this were so much more exciting. And I feel like I really found that in the D3 community. Um, At UAA's last year, like just seeing the Emory team was crazy. And I I wish we had a team that was like that spirited and stuff. Um, And NYU definitely has gotten a lot more spirit as we've gotten to know the parents more, which is just like really cool. Um, But just seeing like the way conference ran was so like people knew each other. I had a, fr- I have a friend on Carnegie Mellon. So like I got to see her, which was really exciting. And then I met more Carnegie Mellon people, but I feel like at other schools or like other divisions, you be more like segregated into your team and not as willing to mingle. Um, like maybe that's true. Maybe that's not, but I just, I think people in the D3 world are more willing to talk to one another. And I think that's a really cool experience. At NCAAs, after the 50 in the morning, I had Caroline Mackey and Taylor Leone come up to me like before the 50 at night. And they were like, congratulations, talking about how the Emory team was like surprised by what I did. And it was just the fact that they came up to me and actually talked to me was a really cool experience because those two dominated Sprint for their entire time in college. And I just feel like having people from the top kind of talk to people who are new or you know, not quite up there is like a nice, it's a really nice experience that we are all one 
and it's not teams actually against each other. Like, obviously they wanted to win, but they were still nice enough to like step outside of themselves and whatever pre-race stuff they were doing and say congratulations to me, which I think is just super kind. And I think that moment really solidified my love for the D3 community. And then also you guys doing stuff like this. Like, I mean, swimming as a whole is not highlighted and then D3 is really under highlighted. But I think if we all just support each other, like swimming is a huge sport. And if everyone in D3 just cheers each other on, it could like be really cool. Yeah, I mean, first of all, thank you. Sorry. (laughs) No, it's it's totally okay. Uh, But I mean, thank you. Obviously, that's like totally like why we did this, you know, and I think like what you said definitely rings true. I mean, I, you know, have basically never had like a bad encounter with anybody in Division Three. I mean, it it says a lot that our first guest on the podcast was Christian Lanuza, you know, right after we had just beat Carney Mellon in like a super close meet. And he was so nice to us the whole time. You know, everybody's always very willing to talk, to share Mm -hmm. things like it's also just been like a great network of people that I've gotten to know too. And it sounds like, you know, the same for you. I mean, there's so many people that are willing to help with things like even outside of the pool too. And I think that, you know, again, you definitely, you know, hit the, hit the nail on the head. I mean, that's pretty much why we did, did D3 too. Um, And, you know, there's so many people that I even, you know, like you said, you knew people from Carnegie that you swam with back in California and things like that. I mean, it's totally same here. There's people that I've, um, met through previous friends and things like that that have become like true friends and i think you know that's a huge goal of what we do um at the anchor leg is to sort of spread the word about d3 and you know you know just make connections with people so Mm -hmm. i think that's definitely a a, a great take on it and i guess in that vein um a lot of people talk about d3 as being like great for things outside of the pool too and obviously you, you know you got to know so many people through swim um care to touch on like anything that you do outside of the pool, whether it's on campus, academics, things like that, that um, you feel like, you know, your D3 swim journey is really enabled or enhanced. Um, I'll be honest. I'm very lazy, so I don't do that much. So I'll talk about some, about some other people's experiences. Like we have Derek Moss, obviously he's in med school. So the fact that he's doing these crazy hours and he's still finding time to swim, I think, you wouldn't find like at a division one school, they wouldn't be as flexible. Um, And he's still here like every morning he comes in on Sundays and he's ridiculous, but um, having people in med school, I know a lot of people have internships throughout the semester. I have an internship next fall, so I can't really speak on that experience yet, but just kind of the flexibility, not that I'm missing practice, but that it's not a rigid, like you have to be here. Um, you can't do these other experiences. Like they're willing to accommodate for other experiences. And I know that that's probably less likely at a school where they're going to want you to turn out trophies and numbers and all these different things. Um, I know a lot of people like work on the team and stuff. And I thankfully don't have to, but um, I know also just not, not necessarily swimming, but just like, um, NYU athletics as a whole has given me a great group of f- friends um, in a lot of different areas. Like there, I have friends who are going to go to med school. I have friends who are going to go to law school. Who are doing like random majors that I don't even know, business school and different stuff. Where if I was not an athlete at this school, I don't think I would have met as many people as I have in like the different schools. Because I mean, our schools are pretty separated. Um, And then I know I've had a lot of support from some of my professors. I'm a history major. So, I mean, like there's not really that much related to athletics specifically with what I'm doing, but I know I've gotten really lucky with the department just supporting me as a whole when I'm, you know, gone for meets and stuff. And thankfully we didn't miss that much school, but I think it is unique for NYU though having some of the support because I know a lot of other D3 schools don't really have the academic support on top of it on top of like athletics and stuff I know some of my other friends like have been penalized for missing class for competitions and I think that's just kind of crazy but a lot of our sports teams have gotten a lot better over the past four years or a few years um I know our women's basketball team they're heading to the national championship I think tomorrow um they won the final four last night in beat a team who had like a 70 something game win streak um so i just think the whole athletic community like 
we I don't know if you got you probably didn't see this, but our swim team went to the basketball game that we hosted last week and they did the thing where you wear your speedos during the free throw. Oh, and wow. I think you don't really see a ton of D three schools doing that <laughs> as much as you do in the other divisions. So um <laughs> they did get in trouble for that. But I think <laughs> I just think like we're turning into more of a not even like a sports school, NYU will never be there, but um, just having more recognition of D3 athletics as a whole, I think is pretty cool. Um, I feel like I did not answer your question and I just talked for so long. Yeah, I was, I, I mean, I think that was a great answer. And, you know, you say like, oh, like I'm, you know, not super involved in stuff like that. But I mean, the fact that you just said, you know, you're taking an inter- on an internship uh, next fall on top of, you know, swimming and stuff like that, again, like, you know, kind of goes to show that you know you can pursue all this stuff like you said on top of uh d3 swimming and you know i'm sure your coaches have given you a lot of flexibility and like you said professors and things like that and you know that's again like some of the stuff that we were trying to highlight right it's um you know uh, how you know your personal professional future and things like that have been influenced by you know d3 sports and i think you know it sounds like for you at least things are working out very well so Mm -hmm. and obviously for other people on your team that are also you know doing these awesome high achieving things yeah um so yeah i mean i I thought that definitely answered the question um sort of in the same vein of of life outside of the pool um we always like to ask what do you what do you want your legacy to be um at nyu you know, absolutely 100% in the pool, but maybe outside of the pool as well. Talk a little bit about what you want to leave on the school, um, you know, in, in a little over two years when you're, uh, when all is said and done. Um, yeah, well, academically, I'm just hoping to, to get a degree, I'll be honest. Um, but I am a part of an organization called The Hidden Opponent with one of the freshmen on the team. And mm. this is headed by Victoria Garrick, who was a volleyball player at USC um, and it's for athletic mental health awareness basically. So I think this year we're kind of just like testing out being a part of the program and everything and figuring out how it works. But I think if after like when I'm gone, if this program is still here and helping athletes find the support they need in academics or athletics or like just life in general, I think that's something that's very important to me. Mental health awareness, um, like, is for me, it's like very personal. So I think that's kind of why I have the mindset of you don't need to practice every day. You don't need to achieve and do everything to your highest level every day. You just have to show up to what you're willing to give that day. Um, so I think if I like kind of leave an impact with, I mean, mental health is talked about more nowadays, but it's still not to the level it needs to be so i think if i kind of get nyu talking more and relating it to the student athletes especially i think it would be a good thing that's awesome yeah that's fantastic that's something that um one of the swimmers and and one of our divers has really pioneered that on on our campus as well and it's Mm -hmm. been it's been really great so that's good to hear that you know you're a part in in bringing that you know really awesome program to, to nyu as well yeah i mean i think that you know it's definitely something huge i mean obviously you know you've left your mark in the pool already, right? Um, Two national championships already. And I'm sure, you know, hoping more to come this year. Um, But that's definitely a great message to spread. And, you know, we had um, one of our meets was like a, you know, a hidden opponent um, awareness meet. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure that, you know, Abby and Sean could have given you a better answer than that. But, you know, but like, like Jaden said, you know, we've got two awesome people on our team that are doing great things for the hidden opponent on our campus and I definitely completely agree. That's a great message to spread. And I, you know, I think like it, it's definitely something great to be involved in outside of the pool. And, you know, we have this podcast to share messages like that, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's definitely something great that you're involved in. So that's so that's a that's something uh, we love to hear about on the anchor leg. And I guess that's kind of a tie in wrap up question. Um Anything, anybody specifically you'd like to shout out? Any messages for your teammates, coaches, any messages for the listeners? Um, anything coming up that you'd like to promote? Make any uh, bold predictions before NCAAs, anything like that? Uh, definitely not going to predict anything. I think that's a little, that is bold, like you said. Um, <laughs> I will shout out um, UC Santa Cruz, the women who made it to NCAAs this year. Maddie Grunder is um, one of my friends. She's a senior this year, and she made it two years ago for the 200 free. Um, and we didn't get to see each other last year, but she made it again this year. 
and is along with another relay which has Teresa on it which is one of my other friends I grew up swimming with and then there's two other people I do not know their names so I'm so sorry but um seeing schools like Santa Cruz who don't come every year um is really just cool to see them coming and then also I think her name's Hannah out of Albion College who just swam the 50 free Mm -hmm. um like shout out to her that was crazy going from I like just like 50s come out of nowhere and I just think it's so exciting when you get under 23 especially I guess a crazy mark to hit um so I'm super excited to like see her hopefully meet her at NCAAs and then um I'll also shout out one more before I like go to my team um Ella Robertson of MIT when we swam against MIT she like amazed me I knew she was going to be crazy incredible watching her swim but just seeing her hit those times at dual meets is crazy she was hitting like a 150 in the two free and like she made me go 151 and I before that had I think my fastest was like a 154 out of dual meet so shout out to her she's a freshman she's gonna kill it next week I already know it um and then for my team I don't think anybody wants me to shout them out specifically but I know (laughs) we're gonna show up we're gonna do well um hopefully you know do a little better than last year especially on the men's side um Derek will at least help with that so uh excited to see what the freshmen do I guess good luck to any freshmen if they even watch this yeah well I mean I think that's definitely a a great message and kind of back to what you said about you know connecting people with other people through division three swimming uh is great and you know talking about UC Santa Cruz and get to see your friends from home certainly awesome and we're uh we're looking to see NYU do pretty well too. I think uh one of our co-hosts might have made a, a prediction about where you guys would finish come the end of the year on the men's side, which you might have alluded to now that you have Derek Moss. But we'll uh we'll keep that for uh we'll see what happens next week. Um Yeah. Well the the other people on the team are gonna show up too. It's not just him. We're a pretty strong team without him. Um he definitely, don't get me wrong, helps a lot, but um this year a lot of new people have stepped up in really good ways so not everything's about him (laughs) well that is that is that is very true you guys are uh, a formidable team um you know even without Derek Moss but it was uh, really exciting to see you guys get second uh this year at UA so um, yeah I think um the best addition that comes with Derek is his family because they are at almost every meet and they lead the cheering section and everything so I, I wish we could keep Derek for longer, not for his swimming, but for his like dad, especially. He knows <laughs> everyone's name, and it's been an incredible experience with them coming. Shout out to uh, Ed Moss, the Holland Hawk, yeah. guy, <laughs> avid reader of D3 Swim Outsider and listener of the Anchor Lake podcast. So, Ed, if mm-hmm. you're watching us, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm lucky enough to uh, have had the Moss family around. Uh, I grew up swimming um, in Michigan, where uh, Derek's from the west side of the state, so... Um, I swim against his brother more so than him, but definitely a yeah, great swim family, great people. And mm-hmm. um, he, like you said, you know, he's brought so much more than just the swimming contributions to the team. And I think, again, definitely something that's very unique about D3 is, you know, just the atmosphere that people like that bring in their fifth year of swimming in med school. Um, so, you know, certainly uh, another great story. And maybe we'll have Derek on the podcast someday if he uh, if he ever gets around to texting Peter. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, you're probably going to have to remind him. Yeah. Yeah. He I feel like Peter reminded him about five times at, uh, at UAA. Oh. <laughs> that was in a few day span. Few yeah. Days span. I um, have not seen Derek in, I think, over a week. So who knows what he's doing? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, sure. He's training hard. Um, but anyway, thank you again, Kaylee. Um, thanks for your time. Uh, it's been a super insightful episode of the Anchor Leg. Um, and with that, I think we'll uh, go ahead and sign off. This has been another episode of the Anchor Like Podcast. We'll see you next time.